All right, this should be the very last Drift Week prep video. I just shook the car down at NB Drift Spring Monster and the car felt awesome for two laps and then I broke it. So um, here's what happened. That was another auction sensor bung and it is gone, obviously. I think that when I was doing the fuel cell install, I was shaking the exhaust and prying on it and all kinds of stuff to try and make sure there was clearance. And I think I cracked that auction sensor mount or the bung weld or something. And then when I tried, then when I started drifting, it just blew out. So. Um, there used to be a narrow band in there that went to the stock ECU and I just snipped the wires at the back of it and left it there to plug it because I didn't have a, a plug at the time and left it for several years. So I'm gonna weld the plate over that. Got this plate that that's gonna, that's gonna plug that up. Yeah. And then after that, it is time to do body work. The new bumper came in, so I gotta sand that and prep it. And the flares are here, gonna sand those and, and get those ready. Spray them and install. I've got a few other things that are change some fluids. And then uh, I think I gotta modify my bash bar a little bit, but that's that should be it. And we're good to go for drift week. All right, exhaust is welded up. Now it's time to do some body work. I started sanding on these already a little bit and I like immediately got down to the gel coat. So uh, this flat black stuff was super thin. Oh, we're getting closer. I gotta spray these things. So paint is not my forte, but I can do it sort of. Um, got my new hub adapter too. So I gotta toss this on to fix the bent one and then uh, I kind of, I already got this squared away, so now I've got a nice cover over my fuel pump stuffs. So that way um, I can set things in the trunk without worrying about smashing fuel lines. Right, okay, so I guess we'll, uh, we'll start on paint work then. Paint is done. I am not great at paint. Um, I can bolt cars together, but I'm not really good at this kind of stuff. I know just enough to make me dangerous, but like, if you look close, like, yeah, it looks pretty shiny, but there's a bunch of dirt in it, obviously, because I sprayed it in my garage. You know, it's a drift car. I'm not super worried about it, although I would have liked to not gotten this junk in it. But I also get carried away with clear coat, so. So the paint went fine, started clear coat, and usually like, I'm like, okay, I need to stop. I'm like, no, one more, one more, one more. And it's the one more that gets me because I lay it on too thick and then you get crap like this because I'm an idiot. So it's a nice big, like right here, there's a nice big uh, sag in the paint. Hang on. All right, the rest of it is okay because I have some dirt got in it. And then a nice big sag on this corner here too. So, oops, but at least that's done. Now I let it cure, I let it, I let it sit in the garage for a little bit so I don't get a bunch of junk in it. And then usually I let, I'll put it on my back porch and let it um, continue to vent for like 24 hours. And then I'll start messing with it and putting it on the car. All right, on to the next thing, the uh, hub adapter here. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna try and do this quickly, but uh, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but there's, there's a big air gap right here in this spot. Right there, there's a gap where it's just nice and tight, like over here. So you can kind of see it gets lar larger right here. Back here, it's tighter. I've got to get this hub adapter off and then replace it with the new one. One of the things that I love about this is it's hub-centric. 
So they're machine, custom machine, hub centric, whereas like the universal ones you buy on eBay are not hub centric, so they're lug centric. Hub centric is way better. One of the things that gets missed when you do like a wide body or wider body on our drift car as well, sealing up the seams. Um, so I got myself this tube of seam sealer here. I'm gonna clean it with some brake clean, get some of the dust off of it, and then I'm going to apply a seam sealer in here to try and seal out the elements a little bit. It definitely doesn't look pretty, but uh, it gets the job done. So I'm still waiting for some stuff to come in to be able to put the rear bumper on. I also need to modify the bash bar a bit, but fender flares are temporarily mounted on the car. Um, the paint color isn't perfect. You can see that it's just a lighter red versus this is a darker red. And I kind of knew that was going to happen because the paint I ordered is from a brand that you can only order online, can't buy it locally. So I went down to a local paint shop and had them match as best they could. Um, so, yeah. But I think it looks better than black. And I'm hoping that once the livery goes on, it'll kind of like blend everything together. As long as the livery gets, the design gets done, the printed gets done, uh, the livery will probably go on. Like, We'll probably install it <laughs> like at English Town, like day one of Drift Week is gonna be, oh, we gotta put this on. <laughs> All right, I started to get the rear bumper mocked up, um, but one of the problems is my bash bar sticks out like an inch and a half too far. I think the last rear bumper I had was a USDM style, so they stick out more versus JDM sits closer. So what I have to do is I'm just gonna move the whole bash bar forward. That's the plan. So I've just gotta unbolt it, um, both sides, drop it down, and then redrill the hole so it pushes it. We're gonna go about an inch and a half. Yeah, inch and a half further forward. And then when I do that, I'm gonna have to redo my exhaust mount here anyway and bring that back. So let's get to it. I just kind of hung the bumper here just with some zip ties so I can get an idea. Um, this side fits a little rough. Obviously this is the side that's been smashed in so it's gonna fit a little rough. This side however fits really nice. So once again just zip tied held in place here. It fits really good. Still got a little bit of work to do to get it bolted on. Uh, I use quick latches so gotta get some of these guys Put on to hold it i usually put one you know one on each side and i think this time i'm going to put one in the middle too but i haven't quite decided on that yet bumper mounts are on this is what i like to use so i need to tighten them up but it's just this rod ball and socket and then you've got these guys on the bumpers uh, i've used the cheap ones before these on the bumper of the, of the authentic quick latch and then i have a bunch of knockoff ones that well, the knockoff because I bend the rods. Like I hit anything and I bend that little ball and socket rod. So I buy a couple of the, the cheap replacements. It's cheaper to buy that than it is to buy the quick latch rods. The cheap ones, the, the socket always breaks. So um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put the bumper on. I do, need to, I do need to trim for the exhaust. So I did mark that. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna cut that so that way I can get the, uh, the exhaust tip on there with the bumper. Yeah, bumper is on. There's like a couple millimeters of clearance with the exhaust tip. Like, <laughs> not much at all. But it looks good, aside from that hole that's missing. So I'm hoping the livery will cover that, because it looks bad. Other than that, yeah. Only thing left now is to mount the flares, clean the car, change some fluids. I still want to change the trans fluid and uh, mount up tires.
We are a day and a half out from for leaving from Drift Week. Um, bumper looks really good. I'm excited about that. The fender flares, they're growing on me. Not my favorite style, but uh, and they don't fit super well. But well enough. Now I've got to mount the other flare. And what else do I need to do? Uh, I need to... Oh, yeah. Got some handy dandy duct tape. <laughs> I got to duct tape up some holes in the car that I wasn't going to weld shut. So I got to put some duct tape holes over stuff. Put some more sound deadening in just a little bit because the trunk like reverberates noise really bad. And test drive it. And oh, I was supposed to do tires. Maybe I'll do tires tomorrow. I don't really know. I might not get tires done until I get there. I have a lot of tires mounted, just not all of them. So, all right. I guess, uh, yeah. I guess let's do this thing, huh? Both flares are on. Now it's time to duct tape up some holes. Some of you are probably going, Devin, why are you duct taping this? That's stupid. Well, it's pretty much what I've always done. And it lasts long enough. I'm not really worried about it. Uh, there's a lot of holes I don't want to plug up necessarily yet. So I just duct tape over them and it, uh, you know, it works for now. I've got a few holes like this that I want to cover up so that way water doesn't come in from them. And, uh, then we got a few things in the trunk to cover up. Holes have been duct taped shut and it's not the most pretty thing, but hopefully it keeps the moisture out. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go. Oh, transmission fluid. That's the other thing I gotta do. I gotta change gear oil. So I guess I'll make some room in the garage and pull the car most of the way in and change gear oil. Right, pretty much the last thing to do on the car is to change transmission fluid and then we'll go for a test drive. Um, but while I've got it up in the air and I've got the front suspension jacked up, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, a nut and bolt check. I pretty much, I mean, you really should do a nut and bolt check like before every track day. I'm not the best at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and check. I'm gonna mark everything with a paint marker to show that I know that I checked and that it's tight, so. Okay, that guy's still nice and tight. Okay, that guy's still nice and tight. Go ahead and mark these guys. Check that. Oop. Check that guy. That guy's good. That guy's good. That guy's good. All right. Okay, that guy's good. If you look closely, you'll see these kind of yellow marks around my car as I nut and bolt everything, nut and bolt check, and then mark it. One of my absolute least favorite things to do is to mess with transmission fluid and gear oil, manual transmission fluid, but I need to do it. Um, I pretty much run AMS oil in my car, and I have for the longest time. When I used to build Subarus, like way back in the day, we did a bunch of oil breakdown analysis stuff, and AMS oil held up the best. So I use AMS oil engine oil, brake fluid, uh, transmission fluid, gear oil, all of that. And especially for the J160 that comes with the beams, uh, you really should get GL4 fluid. A lot of GL5 fluid is compatible with GL4, but Amsoil spells, sells a specific, there you go, sells a specific GL4 transmission fluid. So uh, I think it takes about one and a half quarts. So I've got two quarts. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the old stuff out, put the new stuff in. I hate this stuff. It smells so gross. Blech. Got my fluid pump set up and now I just sit here and pump the gear oil in. Toyota puts the fill plug way up on the side and when you cram a transmission and engine like this into a little Corolla, it just, uh, it gets real hard to get up in there. So I just have to 
just pump it. All right, now it's time to go take this thing for a test drive. All right, I don't know if you can hear me. I hope that you can. We're street testing the car now. Um, the diff is definitely way quieter than it was. The exhaust is a little raspy, but that's just what happens. Uh, I could probably use a little more sound deadening to kind of dampen some of the some of the noise and vibration stuff, but it's really not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and go get on the highway now, run it up to speed, see how it feels. I guess the one thing is, I don't know if you can see this, hang on. My steering wheel is off center, so that happened when I put the, the tilt column in, which was a huge, huge improvement. So now I've just gotta, I've gotta pull the, the steering wheel hub off, rotate it, plop back on, and then we'll be good to go. Let's go get on the highway and do some, uh, some high-speed tests. 